in season one, we traded away pretty much all of our best players to get us set up for the future. And that future includes a very young quarterback. Last episode, Illinois rookie quarterback Tommy DeVito took over and honestly, he didn't play all too bad. Now the ratings, they're nothing spectacular. In fact, the deep ball accuracy is horrific in terms of what the average is actually in the NFL for starting quarterbacks. He has some ability to run around, but he had a pretty solid year. After just starting maybe half or so of the games, around 2,000 passing yards, 12 touchdowns, turnovers were a problem. There would be some games where he would have multiple, some games where he would have none. But he did finish with a respectable completion percentage, again, given what those passing ratings are. But with season one ending with us bottom of the NFC North, same record though as the Bears, we just didn't play great against them, we've come to our first offseason. Now the plan typically with these episodes is we get through the off season pretty quickly and then we jump straight into season two or the next season and get a few games in. However, opposite to what I said at the end of last episode, with College Football 25 coming out next week, we'll be taking a full week off of Madden just to focus on College Football 25. Then we'll come back and we'll do three episodes of College Football and then two for Madden. Now with that, I don't want to start a new season quite yet, to abandon it for a week. So we're just going to get through the off season today, but we're going to delve a little bit deeper than we typically do. Therefore, our first stop is the Pro Bowl. Taking a look at who did what and not on our team, though potentially could be at some point Brock Purdy was QB2 for the NFC. Something we will be doing today is going through all the other teams' rosters, identifying guys that maybe we'd have interest in trading for. Outside of Brock though, we'll jump through here. We see that we don't have really anything showing up on offense outside of our fullback, Ingold. He made it, so there we go. We have an offensive pro bowler. As for receivers, doubt we'd have anyone close. Tight end, we don't even have T-Hawk on here. Offensive line wise, Linderbaum makes it. So we do have two offensive pro bowlers and none else. Getting to the defensive side, see if we have any here. None of our defensive linemen really stood out. We had some decent play, but as we get through the linebackers too, nothing there, corners, nothing, and safeties, nothing. We did not even have a kicker or punter, nor a returner, so just the two pro bowlers. As for yearly awards, this is where I'm hoping all the rookies that we gave playing time pays off for us. Lamar Jackson, though, is the league MVP. Dan Campbell, a rival head coach, is coach of the year. And that tells me maybe the Lions made it to the Super Bowl. As for the AFC, go through these quickly. Lamar Jackson, Offensive Player of the Year. Demarcus Lawrence, Defensive Player of the Year. Jordan Addison, shout out, real life Viking, Offensive Rookie. Kalijah Kansi gets it for Defensive Rookie. Lamar Jackson, Best Quarterback. Elvin Kamara, Best Running Back. Chris Olave is going to be your best receiver. Zach Martin, Best O-Line. Demarcus Lawrence course with the defensive player of the year is going to be best D line TJ Watt though takes best linebacker best DB Jalen Ramsey and Trey Wolf is best kicker as for the NFC side our side Nick Folk takes best kicker offensive player of the year goes to Najee Harris Aaron Donald defensive player of the year now for the rookies fingers crossed we have some we do not get offensive rookie Puka Nakua, though. Honestly, I don't think we had any rookies on offense. It's the defense. And we do not get it either. Will Anderson Jr. Makes sense. We did have two down here. In Cameron Mitchell played very well. And Keanu Benton, unfortunately, not enough to even get him into the top five. Best quarterback goes to Patrick Mahomes with the Falcons. Najee Harris, best running back. And we do not see Jonathan Taylor here. We have to figure out why he was not on the field in this episode. Best receiver goes to Tyler Boyd. We didn't really have any receivers show up much for us. Best O-line, Chris Lindstrom. As for best D-line, does go to Aaron Donald. No one for us. Best linebacker, Andrew Van Ginkle. I guess a real-life Viking now. As for the rest of them, none of our guys. Best DBs, none of our guys. Patrick Sertan takes the group. And then we saw best kicker was Nick Folk. But the season wraps up not with the Lions in the Super Bowl. It was actually the Saints that made it, and they get the dub 26-21 over the Buffalo Bills, who took a lot of the AFC awards. Your MVP is Mike Williams as well. 
Now, as for retirees, we do have one, and it was one we figured would happen. Kevin Zeitler retires after 12 years. That was another reason why I was so eager to jump on the trade with Trevor Penning, including him in the deal where we sent Russell Wilson to the Broncos. And it was a smart decision for us to do that because Russell Wilson did end up retiring after this year. That's why we got rid of him. We knew he would either regress or retire. So we got a little something for him. Surprisingly though, Adam Thielen did not end up retiring. He did regress a little bit. He's down to a true 80. Seeing some morale take him down to a 77. But overall, ratings are still there. And if he happens to hit a free agency, maybe we look to bring him back. We'll see. Now, as for player re-signing, I did in season take care of a majority of what we were looking to bring back. A lot of these guys are gonna be some of the younger options. Hopefully we'll be able to keep some of them around. But really the first one that we need to take a look at is Benjamin St. Juiced. And he does not have a whole lot of interest. Now, our previous offer was four years, about seven mil. He's expecting seven mil. So we are gonna have to raise up this offer if we wanna keep him around. We'll bump it up by 0.5 for both, still keeping us around 60 mil in cap. See if he has interest in coming back. And we've locked him down for the duration of this challenge. Now, one guy who I'm pretty sure I did offer to and he accepted an extension, then the CPU cut him due to an injury on the team to fill that spot was Kalen Saunders. And he popped up a couple times and I feel like he played pretty solid ball. I'm gonna give him a low offer here. If he takes it, great. If he doesn't, I expect we could still go after him in open free agency. So two year deal, he will actually sign. Now, as for the last player we're gonna look to sign, Chase McLaughlin. He's coming off a really good year. He only missed two kicks. He's looking for about four and a quarter mil per season. And right now we're already up at five. Interest level is really low. So we'll bump this up a little bit. See if we could get him to sign and we do as well. Lock him down for the duration of this challenge. As for now, the rest of these guys we are moving on from. Ryan Santoso was a kicker, moved him to punter. We might be bringing him back if we can't find another punter. CJ Beathard most likely will still come back as our backup quarterback. Not a lot of options there. Max Williams, solid tight end. He's just aging. And we're going to see most of these guys, whether they're young or not, we are moving on from because they have next to no interest in returning. Doesn't mean that they won't. As we get over to our first open free agency. Do we have any options here towards the top? And actually, no, we don't have anyone towards the top. Not a single player available for us due to the schools we can use available in the top 100, which takes us down to anyone we're going to sign being a 73 overall or lower. So with that, I'm going to do some deep dives on these positions, probably try to re-sign a lot of those young guys, and then we'll see what our class ends up looking like. And as predicted, there really wasn't anything crazy for us in this first free agent market. Though we did sign a couple new guys, Terrell or Terrell Smith, not exactly sure which, do definitely let me know down below, bringing him in at corner. He's 25 years old, more of his zone type, but we could definitely use it with some young help. Dwayne Smoot bringing him in, and he has the possibility of seeing some playing time this season. We did sign Derek Watt. We obviously have Ingold at fullback, and he's played really well. He was a pro bowler. So Derek Watt was brought in maybe as an emergency tight end. We're going to see how he does there because we're kind of light at that spot. A lot of these guys we are bringing back. We did bring in Shane Zilstra as well. And Jimmy G, he's being signed. He's 65 overall, technically the same as Tommy DeVito. If he struggles, maybe Jimmy G could help out. He's also a mentor. Now, if we're moving ahead to the draft, we have first our three players we need to choose private workouts for. And of these, I think a surprise one is going to be a running back Alex Church out of Northern Iowa. He looks like he has a really good top four when it comes to his skill set, but he's potential undrafted. I want to see where we might need to select him, so we are putting him on there. Obviously, there is Jeremy Weathersby. He also looks pretty good, but he's a round one to two, and I think we're gonna go elsewhere with that round one to two. As for receiver, now we have already seen Alfonso Harden drop from around a two to three projection to around three to four. I feel like that's a little bit more fitting. Neither one, or really any of these receivers look all too promising. So we'll see if we end up selecting one. I'm not gonna push that. 
One guy who does fit in that mid round is Desmond Fulton. We're gonna try to finish out his scouting as well. Now for that round one to two we were looking at, LaMichael Jacobs, a true round one to two. And with us having a high pick, we might be able to trade down even, gain some capital and still get Jacobs. He has a good block shedding, a little bit of some power moves. We need some help for the D line. There is Austin Dowling. He's a speed rusher, a little bit more of an edge guy who has really good finesse moves, but then nothing else to really back that up. But one guy I am also really interested and want to wrap out because again, I want to see where he goes is Pierre Lynch. Haven't really talked about him much on camera yet. We'll talk about him shortly, but those are going to be our three focus scouts. Now, before we actually talk about what the scouting unlocked with those players and all the available players, let's talk about what we have. Well, we actually put together a pretty much full slate here. We do not have a seventh round pick, but we do have an extra fifth. So we could get a lot of work done. We might also move up or move down depending on what we have available because in the future drafts, we don't have a third rounder in the next year. We do have two fourth rounders, two fifth rounders. And then in the year after that, again, we don't have a third rounder. So if we can recoup when we have a bad draft, we'll look to do that. But as for what those players truly look like, let's start from the top. Our top prospect here in LaMichael Jacobs. He's 6'3", 307, 21 years old, played at Iowa State. He's a run stopper, true, but he does have a little bit of some potential elsewhere. He's gonna come in with a lot of strength, having 39 to 37 bench reps, that's great. Pair him next to Keanu Benton, and we might have a really solid duo down the middle, which could then move Shelby Harris to the outside where he would fit a little bit better. As for the skill ratings, well, we have some A's here. Hit power, impact blocking, tackling, and pursuit are all A's. Now, he is injury prone, it's a D. Hopefully that doesn't end up wrecking his career, but he does have B awareness, play recognition, and block shedding. Gonna have C power moves, F finesse. We could kind of tell he was really not a finesse guy. I think the ratings are definitely good enough for maybe a mid first round pick, which would require us to drop out of that four spot. Now, the guy that I was thinking that would be our second selection, Pierre Lynch, he actually drops from a round two to three projection to a day three talent. A little bit surprised with that, but he is 23, 6'2", 240 out of Iowa. When it comes to his physicals, decent 40, a little bit of some strength in there, nothing really standing out though. But the skill set and why I'm confused on why he's a day three talent, it might just be a bad draft class, but A finesse moves and B block shedding with B awareness. Injury is a massive concern, that is an F. B tackling is A stamina. I mean, there's a lot of good intrigue here. Maybe that's good for us. We could get him with a third or fourth round pick. So the only other option I would feel like for us at a higher up spot, Troy Kirkland. He is a corner out of Wisconsin. Good size, 6'2", 205, pretty much my prototype for corners. He does have a little bit of speed, but not the fastest, has some strength to his game but the ratings just don't look that great. He's got man, but he doesn't have any press ability, doesn't have zone ability. Injury, still a concern pretty much with all of these guys. I don't see him as a round one to two. You can maybe take a shot with a mid to late second. So perhaps that opens the door for a guy like Jeremy Weathersby, someone we weren't really looking at considering we were looking at the DT and the edge guy. Now, Weathersby, not the fastest, but for a power back, running a upper 4-4, that's not bad. 5'11", 228, I would say similar size to that of Jonathan Taylor. Plus, he comes with strength, a good burst as well. Overall, I feel like he could be a probably really solid one-two punch. Break tackle is an A, has good ball care vision. Injury isn't bad, it's up at a B. He could even truck a little bit as well. If he's sitting there with that second round pick, he's definitely an option for us now. His competition though, is a potential undrafted. Power back 5'11", 230, similar size, a few more pounds here with Church out of Northern Iowa. And he has similar speed. You're gonna have a little bit less when it comes to the bench, the vert and the broad. But overall, I still think this is a really good talent and who knows, maybe we pick up both of them because we are now in the market for a second running back and maybe even a third despite bringing back Hull. All right now, we don't know what to do with those mid round selections. Alfonso Harden was a round two to three projection. He comes with a lot of speed. That is something we don't have really in our receiving group. He has the deep route running, but the F for short is not good. C to D for medium. His release is awful. You're looking at someone who 
isn't sure-handed whatsoever, but maybe can get down the field? Maybe he's a special teamer at best. A guy I liked a little bit more than the previous is Kyle Traynor. 6'2", 231, 22 years old. He's a physical guy, not going to come in with that much speed, but does have the bench. But across the board, still a lot of concern here. He doesn't really have any route running that's available day one. He could help block on the outside, which I guess that part is good. He could break some tackles. He has good release. Hands still a bit of a work in progress. And I almost forgot about someone, Desmond Fulton. He might have just found himself moving up to that second selection here as he goes from a round three to four to a round one to two. 6'4", 308, 22 years old, out of Iowa State. He's not the strongest, but solid numbers. And he appears to be a little bit more of a tackle. Played left guard, could slide out to left tackle, and we did just have one of our tackles retire. This could be not an equal change, a lateral move. Would require some development, but he could be solid enough. Might be able to play right tackle. He does have some run blocking ability, though the finesse and power of that are lacking. But across the board here, he still looks very intriguing. So helping us try to gauge where we will most likely try to drop to. Again, we currently have the fourth selection in the draft and we're not going with Weathers beat that early, especially with us having Jonathan Taylor. The guy we want is the DT and they don't have him going until late in the first round 28 going to the Michael Jacobs. Well, obviously, if we don't go with the running back, it could shake things up. But I feel like we could drop probably to the early to mid 20s. So pretty much anyone outside of the Lions we can make a trade with. And I think we'll still be able to get our guy plus receive some good capital for the future. And who knows, maybe that opens the door for a Brock Purdy trade. We'll find out as we get into the draft. So of course, with us looking to trade back, well, we really don't care what happens in front of us. First pick Seattle Seahawks. They select for left end out of Kentucky, Terrence Rutland. As for the second pick, it's the New York Giants. They go right tackle Joel Irvin, Michigan. And the Baltimore Ravens, the team that we traded Rashad Bateman from, sent them our guy in Thielen. They go right outside backer out of Michigan State in Richard Zeigler. And that leaves us on the clock. So what trade offers do we have? Well, first up here, Buffalo Bills, 31st. No, we need a mid 20 or even early 20. We could drop back to 11 here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, pick up a sixth and seventh, and then look to trade that again, possibility. We could find two first round picks, that would be great. Any of these in that range we're looking for. The 49ers, they would give us their 23rd. We get a first rounder next year, plus another third this year, and a sixth. That is intriguing, that's in our range. The Falcons who are expected to go after our guy, they're not even giving us a first rounder this year, so that's definitely a no. 26 from the Eagles puts us pretty close. We do get another first rounder. Dolphins possibility at 25, 49ers are better, and unless we double trade here, I think the best option is to go with the 49ers. Dropping down to 23, again our guy was expected to go 28. Hopefully. We don't shake up the draft too much. We pick up a first rounder next year, leaving us with two next year as we drop out of fourth. So from here, I'm gonna get us to our next pick. We'll jump back in in case our guy leaves before us. But again, fingers crossed, knock on wood, he doesn't. And with one selection before us, the Kansas City Chiefs select Shaquille Dorsey, DT Penn State, a defensive lineman, though not our guy. That means we were safe and dropping almost 20 spots back to go after our top guy. Other options still on the board, obviously. Jeremy Weathersby still there and the offensive lineman in Desmond Fulton. But we are going after LaMichael Jacobs, a true round one to two talent is a normal dev. I expected at least a star there. He's got 91 strength, 72 speed, and hopefully we're about to start wrecking havoc with this D-line. As for where we go next, well, we are about 12, 13 picks away from our selection. So let's get to that point, and hopefully one of the two guys we like are still there. 
And indeed, one of them has at least gone. Weathersby has been selected, so Alex Church is now our top running back option. As for the offensive lineman, Desmond Fulton is still there. I don't think we mess around with this selection at all. We know he's around one to two. We're in the second round. Desmond Fulton, normal dev, 87 strength, and he most likely is gonna be a starter for us at tackle. And with our first two selections being a tackle for both sides of the line, well, now we jump to our third round pick and we'll just see who's available. And the outside linebacker I was interested in who potentially had dropped down to a day three talent, he has already gone. So that is unfortunate. There is Earl Harrison. He doesn't look that impressive to me. A day three corner, not looking to go at in this round. So what we're left with with these third round picks is Alfonso Harden and Kyle Traynor. No one else in this range outside of Austin Dowling, an edge rusher who does have that B finesse. And there might be a universe that we get all three. But considering the two receivers were a little bit disappointing, I think we're going to go with Austin Dowling here. He's 6'3", 265, 23 years old, out of Iowa. We obviously signed Dwayne Smoot, but as much help as we could get, all the better. He's got some speed to his game, anywhere from a 4'6'8 to a 4'6'1. Some decent bench reps. I think he could do an all right job. The injury isn't awful, B to a C. He has some tackle ability. He's got some finesse moves. Hopefully we could develop a little extra something there, some block shedding maybe. He's gonna be most likely a depth rotational guy. He's a normal dev with 83 speed, 82 strength. I feel like that's definitely enough for an outside linebacker. Now, as we get to our next selection, both receivers are still here. And I think we're gonna go with one of them here. Possibility that maybe late fourth, one of these guys is around. I feel like the most well-rounded option is gonna be Kyle Traynor because Alfonso Harden most likely is just gonna be a kick returner for us. So we're gonna go Traynor here and hopefully he ends up panning out and he's the hidden dev. I thought our first two selections would have been, but instead it is Kyle Traynor. 89 speed fitting in with the group in a perfect way. 89 acceleration as well. You might need to see some playing time day one or at least see what he can do. And I would be correct, we only had one opportunity to get one of those receivers with us going with the edge guy before. So with this fourth round pick, there's one guy I don't want to miss out on from the rest of this class, and it is Alex Church. It might be an overdraft here, but I think this skill set looks too good for him to really drop much further. I don't want to miss him. Alex Church, normal dev with 88 speed, 81 strength, 90 acceleration, 88 agility, and hopefully he packs some punch behind those skills. Now into the fifth round, we have two selections we get to make this round and two more in the sixth. And there are two guys left who are projected draftable. Juwan Morris at receiver, and then opposite to that, Rudy Turner at corner. So I think the guy with the not only the best upside, but a more likely path to seeing the field would be the receiver spot in Juwan Morris. And we just drafted one, but he's coming in with C short and medium route running. The release, not great. He's probably a slot guy. Catching traffic isn't that great, but who knows? Maybe he could get something done. He also has some break tackle and running ability. I don't think he would be a running back, but who knows? Maybe that's something we check out along the way. But fifth round pick will be Juwan Morris. Normal dev, 91 speed, adding some speed to that position group, which we really need. And maybe he's just a gadget type of guy. And as for Rudy Turner, well, he's still available with the 14th selection in the fifth round, so we'll be going after him next. Did not mention it, prototype size for me, 6'3", 204. He is 23 years old. He doesn't have much strength. He's got some decent speed. He's an okay athlete. The press might be there. He might be a developmental press man corner. Might be able to play a little bit in the slot. Overall, it's a depth selection who's a normal dev with 93 speed, 91 acceleration, and 48 strength. Now, everyone else is just pure potential and drafted. We don't have that much information on all of them. There is John Oglesby, another receiver, who does have some catching ability. I don't know if we really need any more receivers. If anything, it'd be a receiver turned tight end because we don't have too many of those. Offensive linemen, there are some decent options we could look at here. Lindsey Glenn. 
He is 6'4", 335, 22 years old, out of Iowa State. He's got some pretty decent strength to him. Overall, a pretty solid athlete for this late. He does have good lead block, impact block. Pass block finesse is not good. Run block power is there. So he might be just a low-level power offensive lineman. This could be a solid option. We'll check around, but might come back to Glenn. And there is another interesting guy for the defensive line and might provide some position flexibility in Kenny Andrews. He's a power rusher, 6'6", 271, 23 years old, out of Illinois. Now, with that build, I would think left or right end. However, he has, I feel like, enough speed to maybe play a little bit on the outside. So, in some flexibility, but the strength makes me think left or right end. And he has a pretty decent balance when it comes to his pass rush moves. B power moves, C finesse. Maybe he would fit better as an outside linebacker and not require him to do much of any block shedding, or maybe he just gets snaps at rotation for edge rush. But once again, it's coming down to two linemen. And I think where we're gonna go first is the power guard, Lindsey Glenn, and then if still available, we'll go back to the outside linebacker or edge rusher. So Lindsey Glenn, next selection is a normal dev with 88 strength, 78 acceleration. I feel like that could be a really solid backup for the future. And with our final selection in this draft class, Kenny Andrews, still available, going after him. Another normal dev with 86 strength, 81 speed. Again, looks like he might have dual ability, but we'll see that with everyone's actual skills. And I don't think that one could have gone any better for us. We get the best possible talent we could from the class. And in fact, Church is definitely running back to caliber. But let's start from the top. We also brought in a first round pick for next year, which maybe that'll help us out. We'll see LaMichael Jacobs, though a 74 overall will not be wearing number 75. We'll change that. 77 block shedding. Not as much power moves as I was expecting. I was thinking like a 71, 72 could get there with maybe an upgrade or two. But the strength with the speed, I think that is a really solid selection. And honestly, kind of reminds me of where Keanu Benton started off. He's just a normal dev. If we could get him a boost early in his career, I feel like he could take off. But let's fix that number. He will not be wearing essentially what's my favorite tackle number. So maybe we'll give our new tackle that number. You also will be switching to defensive tackle. And as for the numbers, there are none available above 75. Well, we might have to change that later unless we give him some is zero available. No, but one is I think I think the running back was actually zero. So let's do my favorite thing here. Let's give a big boy number zero. Let's change the number first for the running back. So we'll jump, skipping some players, to Alex Church, who is wearing zero. 71, as mentioned, normal dev. 88 speed, 81 break tackle, not bad. I mean, across the board, that is a really good looking running back. And if he sees as many carries as what um, Melvin Gordon did last year, he could see some development early on. But let's get him in a good number. As for running back numbers, 5, 21, and 32. Those are my numbers for running backs. Five not available, 21 is not, nor is 32. All right, well then a new number, how about 20? Not bad for a running back. Does it fit a power back? I don't feel like it does. Do we go 38 instead? We'll try it out. Alex Church will be rocking 38. And then of course with that, the Michael Jacobs big boy at DT will be rocking number zero. Not really something that's gonna happen in the NFL. Does happen in college but I like it with our big guys. Give him that number, it's always fun. Now as for Desmond Fulton, a guy we imagine is gonna play tackle as he is a pass protector. His ratings definitely are for pass blocking, but honestly, fits exactly what I thought they would. And maybe we keep him at left tackle because that run blocking is so low. So once again, editing another player, moving Fulton to left tackle. And then as mentioned, we'll give him my favorite tackle number 70 and 75. Those are, that's the number. Starters, those are what they get. 75 for Fulton. Moving to our next player we haven't talked about yet. Edge guy in Austin and Dowling. Another guy that could play some outside linebacker. Another guy wearing 76, not my favorite. Might edit a fair amount of numbers here. 74 finesse moves with some speed and strength. Block shedding not too far behind. 
I feel like we got a lot of really good depth players that are going to just continue to progress throughout our time here. We'll change the number, of course, maybe give him something in the 40s. Do we have 45? We do have 45. All right, Austin Dowling will rock 45. Now, as for Kyle Trainor, I am perfectly fine with him wearing 17. He's just going to be a bigger version of KJ Osborne, our only hidden dev of this draft class. And he's coming in with some solid route running ability. He has the release, catching traffic. I mean, he's not awful. And he might need to see some time early on, especially with that hidden dev. And slot could be a good opportunity or maybe even allows us to move around Bateman and play him in the slot a little bit as well. Either way, position flexibility, not for him playing multiple positions, but flexibility for all of the receivers, which is nice. And if you're wondering with his size, he doesn't look to be a tight end. Only 52 run blocking while we could try it. I really don't think a 6'2", 231 is a perfect size for a tight end. Now, as for another receiver in Juan Morris, he will not be wearing 23. We don't we don't do that. This isn't like the 90s where I feel like that was semi popular, especially in high school. We're not doing that. We're going to change that number. He will not wear Thielen's number. He can wear Diggs number. Why not? But he is a 69 overall and he has the short route running. Medium isn't bad. The hands still, yeah, a little bit of a work in progress. Don't see him getting playing time over trainer. Actually, Morris is the higher overall of the two but he could be potentially a returner for us. Carrying is a little bit low, but change of direction, ball carrier vision, pretty solid. Injury is a concern, 82. That is what we didn't check with some of our higher up guys, both of which were injury concerns, 82 for LaMichael Jacobs and for Desmond Fulton, 92. So he's good there. Now for Rudy Turner, he's a 69 overall normal dev wearing 13. Not my favorite, but sure, it could stick for now. And he does have some man press, not what we were hoping it would be. He's definitely going to be bottom of the depth chart. Maybe practice squad, though, a risk with a 69 overall. And for Lindsey Glenn, one of our final draft selections, 68 overall, he's gonna be a developmental interior guy. So definitely sticking at guard. He's got some good lead block. Impact is pretty solid. So yeah, another solid developmental guy for the interior, though. Will he see much playing time? Probably not. And Kenny Andrews takes the lowest overall of any of our draftees, which is honestly pretty good at a 66 overall. Wearing 61, don't love it. He's got the power moves, finesse a little bit behind, but still pretty solid depth guy and don't expect him at all to shed any block. So not gonna get involved at all in the run stopping. We'll strictly stick to depth rotation for the edge rush. Now, as mentioned earlier, one thing we will do and it will be how we wrap up today is going through NFL rosters to see where we could use a little bit of some help. Now, obviously quarterback is one of those positions. Tommy DeVito, is he gonna be that guy or is it gonna be Jimmy G? Do we have to look elsewhere? Running back, we obviously have Jonathan Taylor. And if he plays throughout, that would be great. Now, the biggest concern with Taylor, as we saw last season, is he wasn't finishing games. When it comes to his injury and stamina, it's actually looking really good. 94 injury, 69 stamina. He should be in the games, but he wasn't. So we've got to figure out something there, though, honestly, that's going to help out Alex Church see some development, and he has some good ratings, too. So we might see a good one-two punch between the two. Now, I did check Derek Watt as a tight end and he was like a low 50s for it. He just doesn't have good catching ability. So most likely we'll be trading him away for like a seventh round pick. Receiver, if there is something, we could definitely look at it. We are pretty thin outside of the top two. Tight end, kind of similar. We have Hawkinson, but then we don't really have a great backup. And the problem with most of our backups is the fact that none of them really can run block. The only one who's semi okay at it is going to be Coquif and maybe Chase Allen, but they're both low, low 60s overall. So the next guys up, they really aren't going to help us out in the run game, which is a little bit of a liability considering our quarterback. Offensive line, I think we're pretty solid at not even going to look at it. For the edge rush, we could look at it, whether it's going to be left or right end or honestly even outside linebacker. Dean Lowry, Shelby Harris, Dwayne Smoot, and then at right end, Chauncey Golston are all very similar. No one has really stood out. Down at DT, though, we should be set for this franchise. 
Boye Mafe, one of those edge rushers. He is close to an 80, but he just didn't really produce much for us last season. Occasionally made some plays, just wasn't consistent. Outside linebacker, other side, AJ Epinesa, very similar, made some plays occasionally, just not that consistent. Middle linebacker, though, we are good. TJ Edwards, Leo Chanel, and Jack Gibbons, solid. We could probably even look to trade away Joe Schobert, as we have Mike Rose, who is most likely another practice squad year away. Cornerback-wise, for the most part, pretty solid. Nate Hobbs, Benjamin St. Juice, they've been pretty good on the outside. Cameron Mitchell played well out there as well now has been moved to the slot, and we've got some good young guys behind. Safeties, also a pretty good, promising young group. Need to see some progression, but I don't think we need to see any sort of trades for there. So really, what we're looking at, oh, one thing to notice, I did uh, sign a undrafted free agent kicker, Dwight Jenkins, moved him to punter out of Southern Illinois. But the areas of concern for us moving into this next year are gonna be left or right end, backup tight end, and maybe even quarterback will depend on what the next draft class looks like but obviously at tight end we have one of the biggest schools available for us in iowa however they produce such good talent that most likely we won't be able to have majority of these guys george kittle he's already 30 years old he's a 98 overall as well so probably won't be able to trade for him the next best option is a young guy sam laporta though he's an 87 there is no way the bills are going to trade him away Though, could we try to give him two first round picks? Sure, might they take it? Maybe, but we're kind of saving that for maybe a quarterback trade. So Laporta, probably not an option. Now, maybe someone who could fit in would be a guy like Jake Ferguson. Unfortunately, yet again, he plays for one of our rivals in the Lions. They happen to pick up several of the guys we could use. He has the speed, he has the catching, he has the run blocking. We could have a really strong one-two punch at tight end but we're not really looking to trade with a rival. So how about a guy like Noah Fant? 26 years old, he's a 76 overall, he's a star dev. He's gonna have slightly better run blocking than the other options, and maybe could be a decent fit. As for what the Browns would be looking for, that'd be someone like Benjamin St. Just and a current fourth, or a much future second round pick. I mean, they're asking quite a lot. Multiple guys in the same overall range as Fant, doesn't look like they're actually truly open. And then past that point, you're getting into the upper 60s and we already have several guys at this spot. So tight end is looking like it's either a pay big or we stay. And if you're wondering who the best run blockers are at receiver, well, they are the guys we already have. Alan Lazard and Kenny Galladay, both 59. So they're not gonna help us out. So that moves us to left or right end. What are our options here? Well, one guy who maybe we could make a move for would be someone like Will McDonald IV. Now, he's listed at left or right end, but really he seems to be an outside edge guy. So an outside linebacker, he doesn't have the block shedding. He has some finesse moves, but honestly, I'm pretty sure we drafted a guy with a very similar skill set. And then anyone else that would be available for us at left end, well, we already have, like Dean Lowry. And the same can be said at right end. Chauncey Golston, highest overall from one of our available schools. And if there was a DT who could possibly move out there, well, we have the best ones available too. Keanu Benton on that list. So really, if there's something that could be made for the defensive line just in general, it would be going big for someone like TJ Watt out of Wisconsin. Now, no way the Ravens would really be looking to trade him away. 98 overall, superstar X Factor. They did just come off a really bad year. And even then, they're not looking for future capital. So that leaves us with any real big trade left to be made would be either for giving the house for the edge rusher in Watt or going for a quarterback in Brock Purdy. Purdy, of course, being with the Lions, who just had a fantastic year deep into the playoffs. They did not win the Super Bowl, but Brock Purdy is their guy. We would have to give up quite a lot for him. And obviously, if we just ask them, nothing is going to be said. Now, what we have to give up would be two first round picks. Maybe we even toss in another future first round pick. Would that be enough? Hard to say. But I think before we make any decision on quarterback, we need to see what the next draft class looks like. And this draft class might be just what we were looking for to make the big trade. We have one quarterback prospect, Brian Campbell, out of Illinois projected 
undrafted. There's a day three running back. There is a round two to three and a round three receiver. Maybe Braylon Dunn ends up being fantastic. Who knows? Pretty decent size, 6'2", 207. Again, kind of reminds me of Rashad Bateman. And then Richard Rodriguez, 5'11", 214, probably more of a gadget style. And then a lot of potential undrafted. There is a center day three out of Wisconsin, a right tackle in Cole Evans out of Wisconsin, and left end, Anthony Griffin out of Iowa. Now, there's just not much in terms of real projected talent. Day three, Mitch Peterson, Wisconsin, with pretty good size, 6'3", 186. But no one in the first round, and really no options in the mid or late rounds either. So, I think we might be able to make a move. And in a massive move, we not only bring in a top player, Brock Purdy, 89 overall. We make one of our biggest rivals worse this next year, but we give up every first round pick we have in the next three drafts, plus a current fourth round pick. That is a lot to give a rival. We just got to hope that they blow these picks and well, Brock Purdy comes in, elevates this team immediately, and we don't even have to see these future selections. Now to help recoup some of that trade, we are bringing in a third round pick from the Falcons, sending them our fourth string middle linebacker in Joe Schobert. I think that is a pretty good swing for us. So how about that for our first off season here in the Midwest States only challenge, a dramatic change. The offense looks really good heading into this next season. The only real concern is gonna be maybe receiver. Rashad Bateman, Alan Lazard. Lazard led us in receiving last year. Then we have a handful of young receivers who maybe can rival Quintez Cephas for that slot starting spot. Make sure we keep Jonathan Taylor out on the field, though if he has to leave, Alex Church looks like he could fill in really well. We have the new starter, the rookie in Fulton at left tackle, and then right tackle will either be AJ Jackson or Trevor Penning. We'll maybe bounce back and forth between the two. Then T Hawk, overall, this is a really good looking offense and they might have to lead the way as our defense continues to figure things out. Lowry, Golston, Benton, and Jacobs will be our main guys for this defensive line. And we might have to play around, maybe run a little bit of a multiple defense as we have a 4-3 front here, but we also have a 3-4 with our edge rushers. So we'll look to shake things around, move guys to wherever they best fit, put our best guys out there. Outside of really Jacobs, the defense didn't change all too much. We did bring in some backups for various spots and maybe they'll see the field, but overall, this team took a big step forward. Make sure you stick around, hit that Barricon in the bottom right corner or hit the subscription button down below and definitely tap that bell icon so you're notified of not only when this series returns, as again, we'll be taking the week off as College Football 25 is out next week, a full week on that as we start a brand new dynasty. Then we'll get back to both the dynasty and this in the following week. It'll be every Tuesday and Thursday. Next week, Monday through Friday, College Football 25, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday thereafter. Do not miss out, and we'll see what Brock Purdy can do to elevate this team.